It's my great pleasure to welcome both Ron and Topher from SV Angel today, so I'm excited to hear what they have to say. I know that everyone now is an angel investor. <laughs> yes. I know you run a fund, but an angel on a side hustle. I know that you run companies, but you're also angel investors. But this is the OG, OG angel investors. So what I want to ask, and I'm going to start wrong with you, is how did you get into angel investing in the first place? What was your thesis and why were there so few people doing it when you started? Well, um, there was no thesis to me becoming an angel <laughs> investor. Uh, the word I would use is serendipity. And let me, let me tell you why. I was an operator myself uh, before I started angel investing. Um, I helped start a couple of companies. The most notable one was Altos Computer. Don Valentine who is the OG, OG, uh, the founder of Sequoia Capital, and look at Sequoia today. Um, Don Valentine was on the board of the computer company that I co-founded called Altos Computer. And uh, Altos Computer went public, was very successful, uh, but we ultimately had to sell the company. And I'm gonna digress for a second here, but. I always tell founders, if you don't disrupt yourself, you will be disrupted. And we were a microcomputer company, and um, uh, personal computers connected to networks disrupted us, and to the point that you know we had to run for cover, and and we sold the company. So, but but everybody was happy. Uh, Sequoia did well. And so Don said, because we had become fast friends, Don said, you know, what, what do you want to do next? And I said, uh, and he was thinking, you know, would I go work at a Sequoia company or something? And I said, hey, Don, now that it's all over, I got to share something with you. I don't like having people report to me. I don't, I don't want a thousand people reporting to me again. And he said, oh my God, if, if you don't want people reporting to you, you should just become an angel investor and I'll have you come to some board meetings and, and watch how I give advice to founders. Because you're an operator already, you'll pick it up quick and I think you'll like this thing called angel investing. So. From that point on, 30 plus years ago, uh, I, I've been angel investing. SV Angel invests in 50 to 60 companies uh, a year. Um, you know, we're, we're very consistent. Um, you know, why weren't there more angel investors? It, it was a brand new field. I mean, not that many people e even knew that, you, that there was such a thing. So, so the S in SV Angel actually stands for Sequoia? <laughs> uh, no, Silicon Valley, but, 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 but kudos to uh, Don Valentine and Sequoia. The funny thing is Topher uh, started investing much earlier in his career uh, th than I did. So third grade, I understand, is when you started. Just about. <laughs> tell, tell us a little bit about, about how you got involved. I think involved. I was about 13 years old when I first invested in Napster. So he would ask us to diligence companies because we're the users and use Napster and had that moment of, oh my gosh, this is going to change the world. And you were 13. So yes. my kids are screwed. <laughs> <laughs> and so you actually invested in Napster? I did. I still have the stock certificate. You're kidding me. It's a nice piece of paper to have. And tell us a little bit about what came after that, how you got interested in what other things you invested in. At that moment, I got to, I had... At that point, I got to know both Sean's, and I mean, I was still very young, obviously. Went to college, um, and in 2009, I was living in LA. Was trying to move back up to San Francisco to get into tech, because the LA tech scene, sorry, in 2009 wasn't, wasn't what it is today. And so, started working at SV Angel, um, just as a part-time gig, had no intention to stay. The idea was to go jump to a portfolio company, and then maybe circle back to investing one day. But a couple weeks in, I kind of said, this is it. Can I, can I join the team full time? And so that was 13 years ago. And you didn't want people reporting to you either. I did <laughs> not. 
What have you learned, either of you, from decades of investing in entrepreneurs? What strategies worked? Um, what didn't work? Talk a little bit about what you learned. Well, um, at the time, it was hard to have a strategy because it, it was such a new field. But I had an appreciation going into angel investing because I was an operator myself just how hard it is to start a company. It is grueling. And that's why SV Angel has so much respect for founders to this day is because I was a founder, I know how hard it is. Um, so as we started investing, one of the first epiphanies we had was, hey, you know, the company they're going to start and the market they're attacking isn't half as interesting as the characteristics of that actual human being who wants to start a company. So, you know, we're 30 years old. It was probably 29 years ago when we started saying, we invest in the founder. And then we started coming up with this big list of criteria. What are the traits of a great founder? The human being, not the company. Are there a couple that you could tell uh, us you know, about? Are they passionate? Are they determined? Once it starts to click, do they have enough charisma? Because think of you know, Larry and Sergey and Zuck. Uh, did they have charisma to go convince people to leave whatever company they were at and go to Google and Facebook. So even though most of these were geeks geeks, especially 30 years ago, it was, do you have just enough chutzpah to recruit and to manage? Uh, but our, we have a long list of, of traits. And uh, you know, after a few years, I could talk to a founder, and after five minutes, those traits are just clicking through my head, and I'm, we're investing. And some of the early days of SV Angel, the team members would like fall over and say, you didn't talk to that guy for three minutes, and, and you committed. <laughs> you know, how is that? And I said, you'll learn. And, and so the rest of the SV Angel team is, have picked up these instincts, but it was investing in, in people first. The other thing uh, that SV Angel does is we take a holistic approach to supporting founders. Is a founder going to be effective if mom or dad are critically ill, if a team member uh, has had an auto accident? That founder is not going to be effective. When those kinds of things happen to a founder, we, we smother them and say, what hospital is mom in? We're going to go help her. Um, so we, 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 we help the whole founder. And I, I think that's been very, very, very good for SV Angel. Are there some things, either of you, that maybe you've gotten wrong or things that you backed people and you think, okay, there's some characteristics we need to stay away from? For sure. And that's just, that's where pattern recognition is so important in this business, is meeting people, making mistakes, um, and just learning over time. And so that's where, you know, with the velocity that we invest at, we can learn those mistakes pretty quickly and fix them going forward. So, And early, yeah. er, early on, uh, you know, because Don Valentine dragged me to board meetings, that's where I learned, you know, how to how to evaluate and ask good questions. Uh, early on, I was tempted to take board seats, and I took only a few. But then we discovered, hey, wait a minute. Board, board meetings take up a ton of time, and it's the duty of the board to manage the founder, the CEO. The board of directors hires and fires the CEO. SV Angel also early on said, our our mantra is going to be we're advocates for founders. So if we're sitting on a board that's getting ready to, to fire a founder uh, or get into a big argument with the founder, we don't want to be part of that conversation. That conversation is necessary. Boards are necessary. But that's not SV Angel's role. Our role is just to be advocates for founders, 
help them at inflection points, and build a great company. I wish you told me that 15 years ago, Ron. <laughs> <laughs> well, you got, you got time left. <laughs> when, when you're young, you think you want a bunch of people reporting to you, and once you do, you're like, this kind of sucks. And then you go into venture, and you think, God, I want to be on a bunch of boards with other people, and you're like, this kind of sucks. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, what, what have you learned from Y Combinator? I mean, how much have they changed things in Silicon Valley? What have they changed? What have you learned from that experience? YC is amazing. I mean, they are, they're a one-stop shop for founders and, and for investors. That's the beauty of, of YC is that they, again, going back to the pattern recognition, they interview thousands and thousands of founders to get to what today is a few hundred uh, companies per class, so you know that they are pre-screened and pre-vetted, not just of who's sitting there, but based on years and years of data and analysis and understanding founders and who's, you know, which, which founders are the best and which characteristics to look for. So we love YC. We love working with them. Have you they, know, we, we met Paul and Jessica, the founders of YC. You know, the classes used to alternate, so probably the third class in Silicon Valley, uh, I went to a YC, you know, demo day that had, you know, five founders at it. And I looked at Paul and Jessica. Once again, it's just like founders. It's all about the people. I said, oh, my God, there's this, there's this guy who's a geek, Paul Graham, who understands the technology and the idea. And then you have Jessica, who is like the den mother, with intuition and knew when these founders who were working their tails off, grinding every day, she knew when to tap them on the shoulder and say, hey, you need to take a little time off. You know, she, she has amazing instincts. So IQ and the EQ? Yeah, mm -hmm. the power of those two people, IQ and EQ, perfect. It, that is why Y Combinator is unstoppable. Um. If anyone knows Ron or has interacted with Ron, the one thing I will tell you is if you get an email from Ron and you don't respond, about 12 minutes later, you will get another email. If you don't <laughs> respond, someone may show up at your house. Do you have a robot at home that sends all these emails? Well, <laughs> you are prolific at emailing en masse. How do you, and I know it's you. How do you do it? Well, um... I wish I had a robot. So if any of you know about a company that is <laughs> that can help me, I'd 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 love to be a seed investor. Um, but but SV Angel from the beginning has has had the the mantra that we're a service organization advocating for founders. That that means you ha you have to be always on. Um, you know, the, these, these founders, they, they need you in the first two years, which is where we really immerse ourselves with them. And we feel indebted to founders because founders show us, all of us, the crystal ball of where innovation is going. And I'm so thankful that I get, that they share th that crystal ball with us that I feel a responsibility to always be for them, be there for them, morning, noon, and night. And the whole, that's embedded in the SV culture. The whole team operates that way. But I, I couldn't do it if the rest of the SV Angel team didn't know that that's our mantra and they took a fair piece of the load. I, I will say if I were going to choose an adjective to describe you, I would both say responsive and persistent. And those are things that I look for in entrepreneurs, and I, I imagine that's why you were a successful yes, entrepreneur yes. in the first place. Web 3.0, if we want to call it that, crypto, whatever. That's what a lot of people are talking about right now. It's changing a few things, uh, DAOs and how governance works, um, whether or not we should monetize through equity ownership or token ownership. And I think the market's trying to figure this out. Where do you guys stand? I mean, the, trends are, the trend is undeniable. You have to be, if you're an investor, you have to be in Web3 um, because it's just the smartest people in the world are working on it. And that's, as an investor, you have to take note. You know, we've always taken a very bottoms-up approach to investing and just listening to founders telling us 
when's a good time to invest in a new sector, why it's an interesting time, and go from there. And so, you know, we made our first investment in crypto in Coinbase about 10 years ago, and we've been investing in it consistently ever since. And now we're investing more in DAOs, you know, equity that will turn into, into tokens one day. Um, and so that part we, we couldn't be more excited about. I think the, the community aspect is going to be key and going to be really interesting to see how that develops. You own tokens? We or? do. Okay. And Number. if someone is offering you equity and tokens, how do you think about which of those matter? We end up taking both most of the okay. time <laughs> is, is how we actually do it. Um, but if we have to, we err on the side of, of taking tokens um, because we think that's where a lot of the value accrual will be. I guess somewhat your experience at 13, uh, investing in Napster must have prepared you for this because yeah. a lot of what Web3 <laughs> is is kind of like peer-to-peer -peer distributed yep. networks, right? Exactly. That was the, that was the beginning. But, but to get a feel for how big the Web3 opportunity is, uh, number one, I think it's really early days. If you look at Web 2, and we're in the Web 2 era, we are at the founding of Netscape today. That's how early it is. So if you're in Web 3, hats off to you, because you're, you're going to have a hell of a ride. Because just think of how big the ride's going to be. Think about all the Web 2 apps that are going to convert to Web3 apps in a distributed environment. This is multiple trillion dollar opportunity and we're, we're all here in the beginning. It's, it's very exciting. Speaking about multiple trillions, there's a lot of money in venture capital these <laughs> days. You know, I had my uh, annual meeting yesterday and I was saying, in my mind, you either need to get super big or super focused. And we've chosen to get super focused and keep our fund sizes small and stay in our swim lane. Many of Silicon Valley firms are raising multi-billions of dollars. How do you think about all the money coming into the sector? And you guys have always been that super early stage check. Like, do you need to evolve? If it's not broke, don't fix it. So, you know, for us, like I said, going back to the word consistency, We've been consistent now for 30 years, investing 50 to 60 companies, you know, broadly across US-based software businesses, and it's worked out really well. We have about 17% of our active portfolio are unicorns. And so, you know, that's, you know, testament to our ability to just focus and stay consistent. And these market fluctuations, the market will go up, the market will go down, but if you stay consistent, you stay on a 10, 20, 30 year time horizon, you know, That'll, you'll, you'll net in the positive. You might have an up fund, down fund, but... Um, well, order of magnitude, 17%, so unicorn to take the term from Aileen Lee, a billion dollar valuation or more, like roughly how many companies is it? Somewhere around 70. 70 unicorns that you invested at the earliest stage? That we invested at the earliest stage. And so for that, you know, we invest in the early stage, but we also invest in follow-ons um, from our seed fund, and we've also done SPVs over the year. And so today we're actually very excited um, to be announcing that we've raised our first growth fund uh, to formalize the SPV and follow-on strategy that we've always had at SV Angel. Your first ever growth fund. Like first this ever growth dedicated fund. Dedicated growth fund. You heard it here. <laughs> awesome. Uh, so tell us... We're innovating. <laughs> tell us more we're about this. Like what, what do we need to learn about? Is it called SV Angel or is it called SV Supersize? Or? <laughs> it's called SV Angel Growth. Okay. Um, and we're taking a lot of the DNA from the seed fund that we've seen that works over the years and applying it to the growth stage. So, you know, a smaller fund, about $270 million for a growth fund. And that means we want to be highly collaborative and co-invest with all of our partners. You know, we don't take board seats. We're not going to lead. And we think that'll play even very well. Even at growth, well. no board seat. Even at, the, even at growth, no board seat. Um, that's not the role that we play. We're advocates for founders. Um, we can help way more outside the boardroom than we ever could inside the boardroom. And are you splitting it up like... He's doing seed, you're doing growth. Like how, who, how are you going to manage all this? So on the growth side, we have, uh, we've decided to bring on a new partner named uh, Ashvin Bacharedi, uh, who we've known for the last decade. We met him when he was at Andreessen Horowitz and had 
the pleasure to co-invest with him over the years in companies like Twitter, Airbnb, uh, and Databricks. So he'll be joining us um, to lead the growth fund. Okay. And um, yeah. And then, so you guys will team up and run early stage fund, or how does that work? So we have some some other exciting news today. Is that our uh, my long term partner Beth Turner will be now running the seed fund. She'll be the managing partner of the seed fund going forward. Um, she's been an investor now for 10 years with SV Angel the last five years. Um, she has an amazing background and invests across Web3, bio, bioinformatics, uh, healthcare, and then you know our traditional businesses like software. So you and Ron are retired now? Or? <laughs> <laughs> no way. I know you're not retiring. We, what, tell we us what your roles it. become now. Exactly. So of each of them running, uh, Beth running seed, Ashvin running growth, and then Ron and I will be managing both funds, actively investing across both funds and helping founders at both of both funds. And LPs, you know, do you get involved in managing LP relationships or like what, el what else is the plus plus you do? So we have, uh, we were fortunate to raise this fund um, all from friends and family. Um, and so the LP management is very light um, because they've known and trust us, trusted us for so many years. But, you know, one of the goals of the growth fund was to bring in a lot of the founders um, and other partners that we've worked with over the years. Um, so so we, we, we really think it's exciting that the founders that we invested in over the years are now investing in the next generation of founders. The vast majority of our investors in, the, in, the, in SV Growth our founders, which we think is really, really cool. And if I could pivot a little bit, you know, Ron, one of the things I've noticed about you over the last X number of years, I don't know if it's six, eight, 10, but you become very politically active. How do you decide what causes are important to you, what you focus on, and can you talk a little bit about that? Sure, sure. I got politically active, uh, first locally and then nationally. Locally, in the city of San Francisco, which is where a lot of tech companies have migrated to, we had this thing called the Tech Lash. And the tech community, which is the biggest job-creating engine in this country, uh, I get a little insulted when people slap us around, when we're the ones who are contributing to the growth of the United States. So what we did in San Francisco to respond to the tech lash is we started a group called SF City with hundreds of tech companies becoming members and we started to represent ourselves and tell our story. Um, and, and, and we elected members of the Board of Supervisors, we elected the mayor uh, at the time, Ed Lee. We we're proud to do that, we were civically engaged. The more civically engaged tech is, the better tech is going to be. Um, and then five years ago, I wasn't excited about who we elected to be president, so I got very, very involved in that. Um, but I think, I think that the tech community has to stay involved. There's all kinds of policy uh, decisions happening in, in Washington, D.C. that we need to be involved in. Uh, we talked about Web 3.0. Right now, there is lack of regulatory clarity in Washington, D.C. about who is in charge of this thing called crypto. It's causing mass confusion and is preventing many founders from headquartering, headquartering their companies in the United States. Sam Bankenfried is a great patriotic, philanthropic American, he's living in the Bahamas. That's crazy. So we need regulatory clarity. I took Brian Armstrong to DC last May for a week, introduced him to all the legislators, to Schumer, to Pelosi, um, because I've developed relationships with these people over the last 20 years, because I think it's important for the tech community. But we all need to, to establish relationships with these leaders. There's, there's something going on right now in Ukraine that, that we can also get involved with, and I include it in being civically engaged. We have a humanitarian crisis with refugees fleeing the Ukraine, 
And once again, I'm proud to say that the tech community is stepping in. Airbnb, uh, one of our portfolio companies, just announced that out of 500,000 minimum refugees fleeing R Ukraine, Airbnb is going to house 100,000 of them. Amazing. God bless the tech community. And, and of course, everyone saw Elon Musk's tweet about trying to bring satellite communication into right. the country. What Elon is doing is awesome. I am proud of this industry. Um, with, the, with this crisis going on right now in Ukraine, every single one of us can get involved. The Airbnb founders have donated many, many millions. I have donated one million myself yesterday, wire transferred yesterday. But all of us, to the highest degree that we can, all of us should donate to this humanitarian effort and be a part of housing 100,000 refugees from the tech community. Um, and so, you can donate crypto. And, yeah, please. <laughs> We're not fussy. Um, and, and there are multiple ways to donate uh, via crypto. Um, uh, if you want to donate through the Airbnb, uh, it's airbnb.org. Just go to that website. There's a donate button on the right side. And, and, and the more we help, th the better we will all feel about this. The other thing tonight, I know we're having cocktails shortly. I am not drinking Russian vodka, and I don't think any of us should. <laughs> um, <laughs> And speaking of the, the, it's amazing, the refugee crisis, our own Beth Turner, who is now taking over the seed fund, has been on the board of the um, UN Refugee Agency, the UNHCR. Uh, and so we were very involved in this issue. It, and and it, it makes sense that, that uh, SV Angel is amplifying that we all need to be engaged. So, and obviously tech um, garners a lot of negative press because it's become rich and powerful and some people get left behind. Um, I wanna pivot a little bit from Ukraine to talk about racial equality. We don't have a great uh, history in the tech sector of employing people of color promoting people of color or in the venture capital industry, if we're honest? Like, how do you think about that topic? Is it something you've got involved with or passionate about? Well, I, I have to admit, before George Floyd was murdered, um, I would write checks. So I was a good check writer, um, but, but I was not immersed. But after the George Floyd murder, I talked to myself and I said, hey, unless there's a systemic long-term solution to racial equity, th this problem is just not going to get solved. And the VC community has a huge role here because we need more black VCs investing in founders of color. And if we do that, and, and these black VCs invest in a black Larry Page, a black Mark Zuckerberg, a black Jack Dorsey, who build huge companies, unicorns, um, that have thousands of employees, then just like happened after Twitter and, and, and uh, Google and Facebook went public, there's entrepreneurs built into all these companies, and these will be companies that are naturally diverse. And those um, uh, team members of color, they will leave and they will start companies. They'll start the next so, Google, so the what, next Facebook. So what are you doing? We get the flywheel so, going. So, uh, so creating Economic. black equity and black wealth, but are, are, have you taken steps yet or you're starting to work so, on that? So here's what I did. I, I said, okay, I'm going to spend my personal time on this. My personal time is my most, most valuable asset. So I said, if I'm going to spend time on this, I'm going to go interview over 10 black-led VC firms. There's not enough, but there are some. And I'm going to pick one and I'm, I'm going to adopt and mentor that firm. I'm going to help them raise money. And I am 
am going to help them any way I can. And one of the 10 plus is in the room today, uh, Slauson and Co., AJ and Austin. <laughs> and, and here they are. LA oh. represent. Why, why aren't you sitting together? <laughs> <laughs> the, the, um, uh, and, and AJ and Austin are, they're not, they weren't inexperienced. They both left existing VC firms with the mission that we are, are we're going to go find the, the, the Larry Page and Mark Zuckerberg of color, and we're going to solve this systemic problem. I, I would just add, just from my personal perspective, I think it's good and great, and we need more Austins, more Slossons, and, you know, uh, let's see that happen. In addition, big firms with very large existing checkbooks need to have more black VC partners. Right, because it's one thing to say we're going to do some seed investing and 30 million, 50 million, 75 million dollar funds, and hopefully that means that in five, six, seven years they're on fund three, fund four. But we need people writing 30 million, 50 million, 100 million dollar checks that are black, also. For, for, totally agree. Let let a thousand flowers Tot yeah, let agreed. a thousand flowers bloom. The thing about a, a exclusive black led VC firm is they will stay on target. I worry that inside a big VC firm, that one person of color that's delegated to do that, that, that gets a little lost. It can be both ends. But, but I totally agree. Ends. We need both. And the only other thing I will make is, uh, comment I will make is, we also need more Hispanic VCs. <laughs> we need more Latinos uh, writing checks as well. You know, it's um, 18, 19% of the population. <laughs> And it's abysmal in terms of numbers, and I don't think that gets enough attention as well. But j uh, I just have to recognize... Mm -hmm. I, I want to recognize George Floyd for giving us this constructive outcome. This is a hard problem, and I think it's why so many people... I know it's why I ignored it. I knew this problem. But until George Floyd, I just... I put it out of my mind because it's such a big... This is a big lift. I mean, these are two of the greatest VCs out there, but, but I help them a lot, and we're, we're going to kill it. <laughs> <laughs> so I am super grateful for all that you've done investing in tech founders, tech startups that led to Airbnbs of the world who can help and give back. But I'm even more grateful for the time that you spend on philanthropy and political causes. So I just wanted to say thank you both for that and for coming to the Upfront Summit and sharing your experiences. So SB Angel. And now SB Angel Growth. <laughs>